Hi, my name is Cost of Chatterjee and today I'm going to show you how I've built this exquisitely detailed tiny little forklift using GHQ's white metal kit. I've used cheap acrylic paint and paintbrush to achieve some great results and I'm going to show you how. But not just that. I'm also going to show you some hacks for fast and effective weathering and some easy detailing and building tricks to make your model really stand out. Also, I am going to do commentary on my own work as opposed to narrating. Fun little experiment really and let's see how that goes. All right, let's start with some quick unboxing. So in the GHQ K2, you get the body, uh, two positions of the highest mechanism and uh, two operator figures in case you screw up the first one uh, while painting, you can use the other one. Uh, you get the forks, of course, and uh, the etched uh, rollover protection structure or in technical terms and the abbreviation as they call it, ROPS. You see me uh, picking up the high stop position, so that's what I'm going to use for uh, this build. Now, I mentioned this before in my last episode of building the Chevy van, uh, that you can check it out if you haven't already, that the GHQ castings are surprisingly clean. Uh, so much so that it's really a breeze and it's, it's uh, much faster to clean these models than cleaning any plastic models to be uh, plastic model kit, uh, frankly. Now you see me using my microfiles. Uh, just a quick fact here. So I learned about these when I started following the works of Sunichi Matsuba. Uh, he's a great model maker and uh, in, in N-scale, of course. And if you haven't checked out his work, I would really encourage you to go to his Facebook profile and see uh, the type of model he makes. It's, it, he's, he's definitely a great inspiration. Um, I used these for the first time in uh, my barge uh, project and some of you might uh, will remember that. Uh, and you can go and check out that video uh, to see how I uh, build these uh, microfiles. The forks were all uh, twisted but uh, reshipping them was uh, frankly a breeze uh, due to the malleable nature of pewter and I personally found white metal kits to have uh, some great advantages over uh, plastic model kits uh, because how easy it is to work with uh, white metal it not only adds a lot of weight to your models the white metal castings uh, generally have um, you know uh, fine details that you can achieve Here I'm drilling uh, two tiny holes on the body using, uh, I think, yeah, I think it was 0.5 millimeter drill bit. So these will be used to attach the ROPs or rollover protection structure uh, later on. The assembly starts with the hoist mechanism. I decided to use at this point the five minute epoxy uh, glue. I uh, added those at the contact points and then I basically had to hold the parts in place Till the glue cures and though it was a five minute epoxy I can tell you that those five minutes were like you know my longest five minutes right there and it seemed like five hours to be honest I just you know, keep holding it like this all right so now moving on to the ROPs uh, I bend the pillars first to form the shape now I changed gear uh, you know from the lessons that I learned from the five minute epoxy episode uh, to attach the hoist mechanism I'm using uh, super glue and we just hold it for a few seconds and voila, uh, voila. Is, is that the right pronunciation? I don't know, I need to brush my French, I guess. Yeah, I use the super glue to attach the forks as well. And yeah, it's as, as you can see, it's pretty easy to complete assembly of uh, these kits, to be honest. So preparing the model for painting, uh, I start with uh, a flat black primer. I'm using Rust-Oleum, it's a fantastic brand. It works very well on metal uh, and I highly recommend it uh, for metal or plastic models. You can see those handles, right? And you guys, if, if you're following my work, you must have seen me using handles for all my models. I use uh, chopsticks, coffee stirrers, or various other things uh, that, that I can get hold of and attach them using blue tack to the model and they make a lot of difference. The handling of the model during painting, if you have uh, a handle, it makes your life really easy. So I highly recommend you uh, start uh, using that if you haven't already. By this time, uh, you know, the primer is cured, so I am uh, moving on uh, to the painting phase. 
uh, I'm using very basic uh, cheap acrylic paints uh, and I am going for a simple two color scheme uh, gray and orange all right so let's talk a little bit about the color scheme so why uh, gray and orange uh, right so in real life uh, these machines get a very bright color scheme so either it's yellow or orange to aid in different visibility situations right so different kinds of background uh, cloudy weather and whatnot uh, so that's why uh, these bright colors are used. Uh, in modern vehicles, you also see those uh, reflective strips and whatnot. Now, the reason I chose orange is just to make the model pop in a very dull, grayish, concrete background that you can see uh, of, of my layout. Now to dilute the paints, I'm using matte medium and water. Now, if you're using paintbrush to paint your model, one thing that you really have to pay attention to is the consistency of the paint. It cannot be too thick so that it leaves brush mark in the final model, and it cannot be too thin uh, so that it basically spills over, slides over all other surfaces, right? So uh, it, it comes with a little bit of practice. I would recommend that if you're not sure about it, you might want to try it and a small scrap a uh, bit of uh, model then you decide what consistency that you need so coming to painting i am starting with the rocks the underside of the roof uh, i am painting all these parts gray and the brush i'm using is a soft bristle flat brush uh, size zero if i uh, yeah this this is size zero i also painted the operator uh, seat in the same uh, gray color and of course I switched to my trusted Raphael 2x0 ultra detail brush. Uh, you guys I think might have seen me using uh, this brush for all my builds by, uh, by now. As I was doing the seat and the steering base for the operator, I was like, uh, what the hell, I'd rather you know, continue and finish uh, the figure uh, along with the uh, rest of the details. So, and that's what I'm doing. So I switched from uh, the body of uh, the the machine uh, to the operator at, at this point i again chose a very simple two color scheme uh, a khaki band and light brown for the jacket for this for this fellow uh, you know what uh, let's give him a name let's call him uh, steve how does that sound steve yeah it's it's it's, it's steve oh so that's not alan steve not steve Steve! 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 All right, so I uh, continue to tickle poor Steve with my tremendous artistic abilities, as as you can see. Um, all right, so now it's time to move on to skin. Uh, here I'm using Humbral Flesh Stone, and I'm using directly from the bottle. It has uh, a matte finish right out of the bottle. You really don't need to mix it uh, generally. Um, uh, then it comes to the hair. I'm using raw sienna. Uh, and the only remaining accessory that I need to add on him is, is I, I think that's a hat. I mean, I presume it's a hat, but I really am not sure. I mean, look at the shape of it. I think it should be a helmet considering this guy is driving uh, or, or operating a forklift, but it definitely looks like a hat. So uh, I chose the color yellow uh, so that uh, you can consider this as a very symmetrical straw hat or you can consider that as a helmet uh, it's really up to you so i decided to call it a hat mat and that is steve's hat mat so by this time the gray paint on the forklift is dry so i started with orange and you can see me dabbing the paint as opposed to brushing and I remember my point earlier about uh, the paint being neither too thick or not too thin. Uh, this is why. Uh, now, the paint is fluid enough to a certain level of self-leveling, uh, so to speak. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to brush it on. And then I move on to the second coat uh, just to make the color consistent all over. At this stage, I use my detail brush to reach some tiny uh, nooks and crannies that I couldn't reach using the larger uh, flat brush. The wheels and the hoist mechanism, uh, they remain black, so they just get a reinforcement of uh, nothing really. 
uh, because black is just lack of all colors with a B. For the details, I'm using black and orange. Now these two are heavily contrasting colors, right? Um, I'm using that to make the details stand out even from a distance and that is important especially when you're painting an n-scale model because uh, remember that the, the the real sizes of these details are really small and even if you're looking at the model from 12 inches away it's like looking at the model from 160 scale feet away in in real life so you need to play pay attention to that but at the same time you cannot make them look really tacky like i definitely don't want this uh, forklift to look like <laughs> elton john in orange suit so next i'm moving on to the chain drive of the hoist mechanism now to bring out the chain's structure visible from a distance I am using aluminium animal paint and dry brushing it carefully just to catch the raised parts of these uh, little threads so that you can see that there is a thread even from a from a distance a funny thing happened here so I took a little break and when I return I found Steve having assumed the ownership of the forklift the, he, he couldn't even wait for me to take a leak Truth be told, I actually forgot to film that part where I attached the figure to the to the model. But let's just go ahead and blame it all on all on Steve. All right, now that we are all done with the paint and Steve is happy to be where he is, uh, I started sealing everything down with my tester's dull coat lacquer. I call it the magic portion of realistic miniature painting. Uh, this is going to make all that shine of cheap acrylic paint uh, disappear within uh, minutes literally i wanted to use an n-scale box from my collection of uh, crates and boxes as as a load and build a skid using ho scale 2 by 4 lumber which comes to around uh, three and a half by seven uh, inches in in n scale uh, roughly it is the right uh, measurement i played a little uh, with, with those boxes to find the right size so I chose something that comes to about seven millimeter by nine millimeter on footprint. So I used the box as a guide to decide on the size of the skid and it came to about 10 millimeter square. I used the first plank as the reference and uh, then I just used the cutting mat matrix to matrix as the guide to cut the remaining uh, pieces. Okay, so here is a really neat trick you guys. So uh, what I did here is that I stuck a uh, clear tape on my cutting mat with the tacky side up and then I use the cutting mat guide to place all these um, all, all the edges or both the edges and the middle support uh, put white glue on uh, those supports and then just glue the planks uh, one by one it's actually uh, pretty easy um, and once it's done you just you know cut the excess uh, flush uh, with the edges and, and, and you're done, uh, really. And um, next is painting uh, the box and, and the skid. So the box is actually uh, resin, so cast resin. And it is very good at accept accepting paint as is. So I didn't uh, use any primer. I straight away uh, put the first coat uh, of burnt umber with a little, mix of, a little bit of mix of raw sienna. All right, so as the paint on the box was drying, so what I did is I started um, painting uh, the skid. And here I'm using wood stain. Uh, first, I used black uh, stain to make uh, give that uh, heavy, dark undertone. Uh, then I used a light coat of gray. And finally, I used um, a little bit of teak wood stain uh, just to bring out that wooden texture, right? So. What it does is that all those uh, stains together, it gives a very heavy, weathered and aged look uh, to the wooden uh, skids, which is actually uh, very apt for, you know, for a port. Uh, once the skid was done, I went to the box. Uh, again, I did some light uh, dry brushing uh, of, of raw sienna just to highlight it and bring out more wooden texture from the box as well. Weathering time! <laughs> Alright, so I started by some paint chipping on, on the edges here. It's a very simple and easy to do trick uh, for any uh, item, uh, vehicle or model 
that uh, goes through a lot of uh, you know rubbing or scratching uh, I'm using a pencil uh, to use a graphite on the edges to give that uh, subtle shine and also the scratch effect as if uh, you know there is a scratch on the paint and you can see the metal underneath it also simulates uh, you know the polishing uh, some areas get right uh, by, by constant usage like people getting up and getting down uh, every day for uh, for years and the transformation if you really ask me is is uh, pretty pretty significant and it started giving the model a character now coming to rust I didn't really want excessive rust on this model, so what I'm doing here is applying very little patches of burnt umber and raw sienna, where we expect to see uh, rust mostly around those uh, chipping that I did earlier. And on top of the rops, I did a little heavy weathering because generally you don't, uh, you know, the, the roof of these vehicles don't really get uh, a lot of maintenance. <laughs> Dry pastels, believe me. It is a fantastic tool for ultimate weathering, especially for beginners. It's fast, it's easy, it's hard to overdo, and it's very forgiving. Try it, please. I mean, if you if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you give Tripastel uh, a shot, and it is far cheaper than uh, so-called professional weathering powder as well. Here I'm scraping yellow ochre, gray, and raw sienna with a hobby knife to make found fine powder and then I mix those pigments uh, to to bring out that that dusty tone because I'm using this uh, to model uh, dust all right so next I used a makeup brush to evenly apply the powder all over the model now <laughs> I actually appropriated this brush from my wife's makeup brush collection a couple of years ago along with a few other things and I can tell you from personal experience that this is very, very dangerous. And do not try this at home. Just swallow your pride, go to a makeup shop and just buy those damn brushes, right? It is extremely effective though, uh, because these, these brushes are, are really good for certain type of painting, especially on miniatures. You can actually see that 90% of the, that, that powder doesn't really stick. And that is is the idea. I <laughs> I know that Steve particularly hated this part, and then I can imagine why. Because it's like sitting inside a dust storm while being tickled by a huge broomstick. Uh, poor poor guy. All right, so here I'm blowing the the dust, the the shock, the bloody bloody pastel powder for for heaven's sake. The overall weathering is almost done. And all this dust and weathering, it, it looks great, but uh, I actually have missed something important here. I don't know if you have noticed. You see the moving parts, they all look very dusty and sort of jammed. And that does not look right for, for a working uh, forklift. And those parts need to look greasier you see i initially overlooked this part and a real life forklift operator pointed it out when i posted the photos in a facebook forum and this is why it is important as a model maker to talk to people talk to people in real life who are uh, dealing with the real thing you can benefit from their experience because end of the day you it's not possible for a model maker to go and know everything about the real world right so um, what I am doing here is using my ultra detail brush to paint some glossy black paint at the contacts of the moving parts uh, that basically uh, denote uh, grease. The brush obviously cannot reach all the tough corners. I simply dabbed uh, tiny amounts of humbral black wash in, in, in those places and let uh, viscosity do its job without any pay of course I, I don't earn enough to pay viscosity any money then I also use the wash in the in the corners to redefine some of those uh, lines uh, that got oversaturated uh, by dry pastels finally I have a great workhorse for my little port layout uh, that that actually looks the part Hopefully you'll find these tricks and techniques handy. And if you have built a similar model in HO or N scale, then please don't forget to leave a comment below and tell me about your experience. 
And just to remind you, in my next episode, I'm going to show you how I've built this tiny little red truck that is packed with tons of cool features, even in that small size, including operating headlights. And if you haven't done it already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can stay up to date with the new releases. Thank you for watching and until next time, have fun making miniatures.